Hello everyone and welcome back to Arctic Retro. So it's almost uh, summer here, well it is uh, June the 1st and uh, yeah <laughs> we are having like 6 degrees Celsius and rain so uh, not very summery like here but uh, that's how it is sometimes here up north. And with the summer time and the vacation time for me and my family soon and also I got a lot of things to do in my daytime work. I am slowing down the pace on this channel a little bit, uh, at least for a couple of months. And uh, yeah, I think I will release a video every other week. As you might have noticed, I already did. But today I'm going to take a look at this machine. This is a Commodore SX64 and uh, yeah, it's kind of a special machine. I did a series a while back, a couple of years ago, where I did some restoration work on a similar machine and it turned out great, it worked. However, this one is in a mess. This machine, like the other SX64, it doesn't belong to me. This belongs to Kjell Ove, my friend. And uh, Kjell Ove, if you don't know already, he has a YouTube channel himself, a very nice one. You should check it out. It's uh, Koiro Retro Innovations. He has a lot of uh, interesting videos. So check it out. This machine is in a mess, as I said, it's quite dirty, it's missing side panels and stuff. Um, it has a keyboard and it also has the keyboard connector, which is often lost on these machines. But I don't, it even powers on, because if we take a look inside, it's uh, just a complete mess. This video is sponsored by PCBWay. If you are a creator and need some PCBs, then you should consider PCBWay. If you visit PCBWay.com, you can get an instant quote on uh, very good quality PCBs for uh, affordable uh, prices. Besides good quality PCBs, uh, PCBWay also uh, offers CNC machining, sheet metal fabrication, 3D printing, injection molding, among other services. So head over to PCB Way and check out their services. But before we do that, let me repeat a little bit about uh, what this machine actually is. Uh, it's in fact a complete Commodore 64 with a little 7 inch uh, CRT screen and a built in uh, floppy disk drive. And it's even got the disk inside. <laughs> And the keyboard and it's uh, a luggable, it has a handle, you can carry it. <laughs> and the keyboard, it um, goes in front like this. And on top here you actually have um, a little slot for cartridges. And here's a little clip from my previous video series where I restored uh, a similar machine. And uh, as you can see, this one worked and turned out uh, great. So I actually own uh, most Commodore uh, machines by now. However, this is one of the things I don't have in my collection. So I actually want one if I can ever find one to be able and buy it. <laughs> I mean, the prices on these are ridiculous. On the back side, we actually can find some of the familiar contacts uh, that the Commodore 64 has. Uh, yeah, this is the power supply. It has a built-in power supply of 230 volts. This is a user port. The serial floppy disk connector, uh, video output, even though it has a built-in screen, it can uh, show the picture on a secondary monitor if you like, and then the two joystick ports. So the machine was already in this state when I got it from Shell, and uh, yeah, <laughs> it has a lot of modifications done to it. Uh, my suspicion is that uh, this was a mod job that eventually 
wasn't uh, completed. Uh, yeah, so we'll take a look at it and I'll see if I can even get it to start up uh, at some point. Uh, I actually doubt it, but uh, we'll see about that. If I can't, then I say this was an uh, uh, exploration video and then I think I'll send it back home to Kjell-Ove and he can fix it himself. I think this is a uh, RF auto <laughs> that is not original. If you want to disassemble this machine completely, there's a lot of work and uh, unscrewing things. I already did that before I took it completely apart and uh, serviced every part and did a full recap on this and that was really time consuming. So here we can see the inside. Um, yeah, cartridge port, a speaker, the CRT. On the side here, this I think is um, the main board with the CPU and stuff. And I can already see some modifications to that. I think this is um, the floppy disk controller card or maybe it's this. I don't really remember uh, now. But the thing is, it has a lot of uh, additional stuff like, uh, yeah. It has four different switches on the front panel here. Let's take a look at that. So here you can see on the side there's uh, four switches which are not there originally. And part of uh, that add-on is this arrangement here. I don't even know what it is. This is the original uh, connector for uh, the user port. Instead uh, they have uh, added this kind of stuff here that's been soldered on. I don't know what this is. This looks like a 12 volt something. Looks like transformers but uh, I doubt it's that. And yeah a lot of uh, different cables. There's some electronics on the back here. Um, a few transistors and stuff. And then you have all these wires going to that additional set of um, switches and uh, yeah let me take out this card let me see if i can manage to pull this apart yeah there's an rf modulator i think that's not original um, there's a loose ground wire down here poking out and if we take out this card here It says FDD, so yeah, it's the floppy drive controller card. And I think uh, the installation here is actually a fast loader solution for uh, the SX64. Here's a couple of EEPROMs that has been stacked up on each other. And it has some bodges, some, uh, yeah, is that resistors or... Um, some filters, I don't know. <laughs> so I'm gonna do a little bit of investigation here and see if I can figure out what kind of a modification this is, if there's uh, multiple ones. But as you probably can see, this machine won't power up. I mean, I can try and turn it on, but uh, I'm afraid it could then uh, do something bad to itself. Yeah, if I zoom in on this chip, it actually says 1541 speed DOS there. So, yeah, and speed DOS is uh, like a Jiffy DOS. It's a special kind of um, kernel ROM, I think, or, and it uh, provides additional basic commands for disk operations and uh, fast loading of uh, the 1541 floppy disk drive. But there seems to be a lot more going on here. And the thing here, which I thought was maybe small transformers, it's actually relays. And uh, yeah, so that means um, something is controlled by this relays. But I have no idea. So when I untangle this and take a closer look, it actually seems like uh, nothing is uh, connected uh, to uh, power on this floppy disk controller card. So, uh, and the rest is connected, so maybe I should try and hook this up and see what happens. All these wires here, what the heck is this? Plus ground, video, chroma, luma, it's some sort of uh, video output. 
And that loose uh, grounding uh, wire there, is it uh, connected to ground the machine itself? Let's check. Yes, it is. So then that's not any danger then. Okay, I'm gonna hook this up. I'm curious if it will start. <laughs> YOLO, isn't that what they say? You only live once. Okay, I'm turning it on quickly to see what happens. Okay, I hear some uh, high voltage noise like a CRT turning on and I hear some humming from the speaker. So it's a little bit hard to turn the machine right now, but I can see there is a picture in fact. Yeah, let me see if I can just move the camera over there. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> what the heck is that? Yeah, it looks like uh, some kind of uh, machine called monitor or something. Okay, I'm gonna see if I can turn this machine around and take a closer look at this. So let's see now. Takes a while to pour on. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> so it goes into large assembler. What the heck is that? Yeah, to avoid flickering, I need to adjust uh, the brightness uh, quite high. But as you can see, there's some machine code monitor or uh, assembler here uh, that's been loaded. That's kind of strange. Never seen that or even heard about it. But uh, since this has modified the ROMs, it could be something that has been uh, installed just to test something. I don't know. So I googled a large assembler and uh, couldn't find anything. So I just think that's something that has been uh, modified. It's some other assembler. If you know about this one, then please uh, comment below the video. Well, look at that. There you have it. Commodore 64 Basic. I just switched uh, some of the switches there on the panel and it turned into <laughs> this screen here. Uh, it doesn't have a blinking cursor um, seems to be an issue there and it actually has the Commodore 64 basic colors from the original machine the SX64 uses some other uh, screen colors maybe this is just a ROM switcher you can switch between different ROMs I'm gonna turn those switches again if I turn this one up and then start the machine yeah look at that that's even another uh, <laughs> ROM Tillhörer Björn Eng. Uh, that means belongs to Björn Eng. That's a Norwegian name. So that's another ROM. Now I'm going to switch uh, the other switch. See if that switches ROM. Yes, look at that. That's even another one. That's with a black background. <laughs> But otherwise, it looks to be stock Commodore 64 Basic V2. Okay, let's uh, flip the third switch then. Yeah, and that's uh, that uh, <laughs> assembler. No, that was it. I couldn't find any more ROMs. Just adjusting the screen a little bit. Uh, the picture looks quite uh, nice. However, that's kind of small for me. Let's try a cartridge, see if it will uh, run a game. <laughs> Gonna try this Donkey Kong. Hopefully it's this way. Not really sure. Nope, that didn't do anything. So I tried the dead test cartridge as well, and uh, yeah, I even turned it around the other way. But uh, yeah, it won't start from uh, cartridge, so that's probably disabled some way. Anyway, that was kind of unexpected that it uh, actually worked. However, <laughs> heavily modified, and I know connected. Uh, the keyboard but uh, as expected it isn't working because we don't have a blinking cursor there so that might indicate a CIA chip that's not working anyway I'm not really sure how to proceed with this machine um, I need to consult with the owner Kjell Ove and uh, hear what he thinks but if it was my machine, I would have removed all that extra stuff and uh, tried to make it uh, original again. So yeah, if that's the case and Shell wants to do that, then I'll probably do that. And hopefully that will be possible and no irreversible damage has been done to the machine. Hopefully we'll see. And uh, yeah, I might need some parts uh, for it as well. So, all right, it's the next day and I have talked to Kjell, the owner, and we 
agree that I tried to remove uh, that speed DOS uh, <laughs> modification and um, yeah, see if I can get this uh, machine up and running with the floppy disk drive usable and also fix the issue with the, the keyboard or the missing cursor. So I think I'll do that now and uh, before I do that I just want to take some good pictures of the stuff here so that uh, yeah, we can uh, reference that later if it's uh, becoming necessary. So I'll start by actually disconnecting this uh, power supply module completely and removing it so that I can desolder those um, wires. This is the, the ground wire. And then this uh, add-on <laughs> coaxial cable here goes to this uh, modulator here and you can disconnect it. Yeah, and then just take out the connector for uh, the motherboard uh, there. There's also a few other uh, wires going from this connector PCB here over to the motherboard and uh, yeah, this board here. So now I think everything is free except from uh, this one here the mod and uh, yeah it obviously goes to some of the switches or buttons so I'm just gonna desolder those in place and this white wire goes from the relays here over to the switches there I'm just gonna cut it then we have this stack of ROMs uh, connected with two wires to uh, the switch panel and uh, just gonna lift them up. Okay, now I think everything is loose. Gonna desolder the small wires that has been added here. Seems like there were solder points there or it's just VIOS that has been soldered to and um, also gonna remove it from um, the controller board because we don't need this. So it doesn't look like the best solder job in the world, but uh, yeah, I imagine it wasn't easy to solder down here. So this speed DOS thing, it, uh, the reason it soldered here on the user port was that it used um, parallel transfer and uh, thus it uh, provided a lot faster uh, data transfer from the floppy drive. Yeah, that's off. There's a couple of wires there that has been cut. I'm not really sure what that is, but I'm gonna leave those. And then this contraption. Then I'm going to remove all these wires. Okay, so that's it. Control board is free. Some kind of uh, bridge there. <laughs> now for these EEPROMs, I'm not really sure how to separate those as all the pins are soldered together. Uh, <laughs> so see if I can just heat it up and then lift each pin from the top one. Yeah. I'm not really sure if it's the original uh, ROM that uh, sits underneath or not. Okay, all the pins are loose and several of the pins uh, are missing and was replaced with uh, just some uh, wires so <laughs> some kind of work yeah and there we have a ROM with some uh, number on it I'm gonna look that up but it's now missing one uh, leg but that can be fixed yeah, that ROM is in fact uh, MOS 90.12.29 and uh, that is DOS ROM, high ROM for the Commodore 1541 floppy disk drive. I just placed the chip uh, loosely in the socket so that's easier to um, 
yeah, clean off that um, solder on the legs. That looks better and now I just need to find a replacement um, leg for this chip. I think it was purposely cut, it's not that it just uh, broke off by itself. Here's a broken chip, just steal one from uh, that one. So let's see if I can solder uh, this in. <laughs> not the easiest thing, but uh, yeah. A little bit shaky hands, but um, yeah, that's how it is. Let's see now if I can make this straight. <laughs> well, <laughs> almost. So that looks perfect, I think. So I'm placing uh, the ROM back into its uh, place in the socket and hopefully it will uh, work. <laughs> Yeah, and that solder pin, it held. So hopefully this uh, controller card will now work with the floppy drive without any issues. I'm just gonna yeah, clean up a little bit of this mess. I'm gonna bundle up these wires and secure them with a little bit of tape. But the thing with the missing uh, cursor on the screen indicates an uh, issue with uh, one of the CIA chips. So I'm gonna take out the motherboard and um, yeah, see if those are good or not actually the motherboard on this machine is uh, split in two you have this uh, card here and then you have this card i think the ci8 chip sits on this one and they are connected together with this uh, contact down here goes all the way and uh, yeah that contact seems a little bit loose um, it's not fully connected, it won't stay together, but I, I guess the machine was working. So <laughs> I'll see if I can adjust some of that by bending some of the brackets here that's holding the card, but I need to take out this card. And, and it's secured by just this uh, plastic clip here. What's this then? <laughs> okay, that was probably something from uh, the mod so yeah disconnect this cable here first and there's also um, this uh, ribbon cable here that goes to uh, the cartridge port i actually gonna yeah maybe i'm gonna take that out clean it up well, no it can just sit there for now okay now it's free yeah and there we have the little uh, daughter card uh, it's called sx64 io and it has the uh, two cia chips and uh, almost nothing else <laughs> except the connectors so what i'm gonna try first now is actually just to swap those and uh, see if um, that brings uh, the cursor back because the two different chips even they are the same they have different uh, tasks in the machine one has to do with the keyboard and uh, the other one has to do with other io like uh, the cassette drive and the floppy disk drive So I'm cleaning up uh, the sockets first and then I'm gonna swap those. At the same time just gonna clean up this um, cartridge port here. Also gonna use a little paper just uh, push it down see if that clears off some dirt or anything. Push it up and down. Yeah, a little bit black. So swapping this. Now the reason that um, the cursor wasn't blinking, uh, which is uh, usually due to one of the CIA chips gone bad, might be that the card was not properly inserted into the contact. So 
I'm going to insert it properly. Hopefully it is working. I will see. While I'm at it, I'm just going to clean up um, the board as I go along. Um, probably not going to disassemble the whole machine like the CRT and that stuff, but because that's a lot of work. But I am going to take the whole machine down to my garage and uh, blow it uh, free of dust with the compressor there. The floppy drive card, I'm just inspecting it because uh, yeah, sometimes uh, these mods that are as, uh, used on old machines, they require cutting some traces or something like that. Just can see that everything looks all right. Nothing has been cut or removed. I actually found one issue. See, those two pins are lifted and uh, not in the socket probably on purpose <laughs> so I'm just gonna fit that uh, chip again by the way there's the 6502 microprocessor that uh, sits in the 1541 drive so that's actually the same processor as in the machine itself almost <laughs> oh there's even one more chip with uh, lifted legs <laughs> gonna fix that quickly okay now I can't find any more issues so I think I'm uh, gonna test this now in the machine and see if we can uh, get life into the floppy disk drive at all <laughs> and that the machine still works all right I'm gonna start to partly assemble the machine just so that I can see if it still works uh, but uh, first let's take a look at this arrangement here <laughs> So this is uh, the main board of the computer or the CPU board and as you can see here's even three EEPROMs uh, stacked on top of each other and soldered together and below that there's um, some arrangement here with uh, some kind of a racer board and a ROM about that so probably some stuff having to do with the switching of the ROMs I don't know um, would be interesting to take this out and take a further look but I think I'm not gonna do that uh, right now it's a lot of uh, stuff that has to be taken apart to do that there's a track here for the card a little bit tight space to get it in but I think I can do it yeah so just gonna slide it right into place yeah now I think it sits properly however if you push it down so that it's a level then the whole board here moves but I guess uh, that's okay and uh, the clip that holds the card uh, sits on this and this is a little bit bent so I'm just gonna bend it a little bit yeah like that now that's uh, properly in and uh, then uh, these cables uh, which are <laughs> by no means uneasy to get in at least this big one well I think I got it right away this is for the cartridge port I actually found a loose screw down here, I don't know where that came from. Then we have the floppy drive board and it goes here, it also has uh, this uh, slot here. And it has its clips still intact. Not an easy patent. <laughs> very fiddly to get these clips in all right I think that was it and now I'm just gonna connect the the power supply and the I.O. board uh, in this connector PCB. Mm -hmm. 
so I wonder why this uh, little ground wire here just hangs loose there I'm just gonna yeah isolate it so that it don't short out with something accidentally and then we have all these wires that needs to be connected up again This one was of course over here to the motherboard. Yeah, I think that was it. Everything is uh, hooked up now and uh, yeah, should we test it? All right, turning on the power. Okay, there's life in the floppy drive <laughs> and it turned off and that means it has uh, initialized uh, correctly. Now let's see if anything comes onto the screen. Nope, seems to be black. Okay, so the screen has power. Um, yeah, if I turn uh, brightness all the way up, then it shows a picture, in fact, some lines. So what could have happened here? Um, maybe swapping uh, the two CIA chips uh, maybe made it worse, and maybe one of the CIA chips is completely gone and now brings down the machine. I have seen that before. I had another Commodore 64 once that had uh, a bad CIA chip and uh, it had a black screen. Yeah, I'm gonna quickly take out the board and uh, yeah, swap back uh, the CIA chip, see if that brings uh, life to the machine. And uh, yeah, if it does, then I'm gonna find a working CIA chip. Swap them again. Let's see now. Card is back in the machine. Yes, look at that, we're back. <laughs> and we have a blinking cursor, look at that. <laughs> okay, the CIA chips are now as they were, but uh, suddenly the cursor is blinking. So maybe just reseating in the chips uh, did it magic. And yeah, let's see if the keyboard works. Yes, the keyboard works. There was a note on this keyboard. It says uh, some keys down to the left doesn't work. X and shift yeah and that totally is correct X does not work however I got a new keyboard membrane for this I'm gonna swap that uh, yeah in a minute now what about the floppy drive let's see if I can load the directory and the shift key doesn't work on that side so yeah luckily we have two shift keys Uh, hmm. okay, nothing. Run stop does not work. Okay, so there's clearly some issue with the floppy drive controller card or something. Okay, so I checked a little bit more and the floppy card has one contact here that is not populated. So where the heck is that? I mean... There should be some kind of um, wire going there, contact put there. <laughs> Don't remember if it was there before. No, I actually think that uh, contact there is not going to be populated. It just has a reset EXT on it. So probably for some external reset switch if you want to have that. Just turn it on at it. Uh, <laughs> made a large hum from the transformer what's going on here no in fact it's coming from the speaker the humming and uh, yeah now the drive didn't initialize and the screen didn't turn on so <laughs> I must have done something wrong here okay while inserting um, the car I actually noticed that uh, it is possible to insert it uh, one pin off <laughs> the contact if I pull it out and let it go all the way down to its uh, track, it actually inserts into the contact. I'm not sure if you see it here. One pin further down that it should. So I think actually that was the thing that has happened. Hopefully it didn't uh, destroy the card or anything else. So <laughs> let's see now. Okay, so it works. <laughs> I was afraid I have damaged something here. Uh, 
However, now with the new CIA chips in, let's see if uh, disk operations work. Nope, still not working. So uh, yeah, that must be something else then. So that could be many things. That could be a fault on the floppy drive itself. It can be a fault on the controller card. Um, it could be that the, <laughs> the read head is actually stuck and can't move uh, or the motor is, the stepper motor is not uh, working anymore. So I think I'll try and uh, take out the floppy drive and see if I can clean it up a little bit, see if that helps. But first I'm going to check if it can read from uh, uh, external floppy drive. I have set this up as a device 9. So let's see now. Comma 9. Yes, it's reading. <laughs> Loading, ready. Okay, let's see what's on this disk. Okay, there's uh, different things here. 3D part 1, 2. Grid trap, C Fox, Manic Miner. Okay, let's load Manic Miner. Yeah, and that loaded. <laughs> okay. I remember this game from back in the day. <laughs> it's a fun game. Well, that at least uh, <laughs> proves that the machine is working just fine on uh, yeah everything except uh, the floppy drive. I wrote a little program that checks uh, the status from the drive and uh, yeah, it's just opening the channel and uh, getting the input on uh, channel one and then closes again and prints uh, the output. And as you can see it, uh, yeah, first time it uh, returns uh, CPM DOS V2.6, 1541, and second time, okay. So that means uh, communication with the controller card is uh, good then. So probably means that the error must be in the drive itself. So I'm gonna pull that out now. However, taking the drive out is not easy. Uh, if I remember correctly, you need to remove the CRT as well to be able to come to the screws for the drive, which is down there below the screen and uh, the drive bay. So yeah, <laughs> gonna need some screwing here. And I think you also need to take off uh, the front it's also necessary to uh, remove uh, the underside um, cover here to access uh, the inside. So just going to remove that. So at least we have access to the drive from the underside. So um, yeah, but I can't access the drive head. It's on the other side. It's there. Maybe if I try to move it, is it this? Yeah, it moves all right. Doesn't look very dirty or anything. So yeah, maybe the drive itself is uh, damaged or the stepper motor and the belt is in good condition. No, the front should be loose. However, all those uh, extra <laughs> Switches are obviously attached, some of them. Now I'm gonna try and remove uh, the CRT. It has four screws down below there. Not gonna completely remove it, but if I can get it to the side so that I can release the side screws for this drive bay, then that might be enough. And then two screws at the back. This is a CRT. It has high voltages and uh, yeah, you should be very careful when working with these. If you touch any high voltage, it can be quite dangerous. So the machine is of course disconnected from the mains now. So hopefully it has discharged. Uh, if not, I could of course discharge it by yeah, shorting out uh, the cathode there. Actually, I didn't dare to work more on this now if I'm going to remove the CRT. So I just shorted out the, the contact for the anode cap. 
by just having a wire here going to ground. Let's see if I can lift this up. Now I also can access uh, the glass in front of the CRT and clean it and clean behind it. Yeah, now I can access the screws on the side. They're there. Just need to find something to support this with. So I can see there's a bit of a rust corrosion down here. Under the screen as well. So that needs to be taken care of. But I'm not gonna do that in this video. This was just to get this machine up and running. So that was that side and um, yeah. The other side, I think I have to remove the motherboard to reach those screws. Yes, the motherboard needs to come up because uh, the two screws are down here. Uh, on the other side, impossible to reach, at least with the tools I got. But it's the same deal there. There's one plastic clip and seems like uh, two of the others has been replaced with uh, screws. Now this becomes a real mess. Can I pull this up without removing everything else? Let's see, can I reach the screws now? Yes, I can. So now the drive is uh, loose. Seems like I need to take off this storage compartment. However, it just seems to be clipped in. So just yeah, release those clips and it's loose. That reveals the drive and it is loose, but I think you cannot pull it out. You need to lift it up. So I released the cable obviously and it had a couple of cable retainers and one far down there. Now I think I can lift this out gently. So now we can inspect the drive and it's an Alps drive. Looks nice on the underside but this side is full of dust and dirt so it needs a good cleaning. But uh, it looks um, to be original, nothing has uh, been modified here. So I'm just going to clean it up a little bit, uh, blow away the dust and uh, lubricate a little bit. Uh, very dirty, <laughs> but uh, the head seems to be moving all right. All right, the drive has been cleaned up and uh, I have lubricated it and cleaned the read right head. So I doubt that will make any change, but I'm still gonna hook it up and test it. Nope, as expected, still the same. Um, okay, so I'm just gonna do one more thing to try to figure out of this. I'm gonna take out the floppy drive controller card and inspect it a little bit more and see if uh, I can find anything. If I can't, then I'm just gonna leave this for now because this video is getting uh, long enough. If you remember, I wasn't able to run a cartridge on this machine, so I'm just gonna check now if it's working. This is the dead test cartridge. It takes a while to start up. Yes, look at that. <laughs> now it works, nice. Just gonna let it through and see what it uh, tells us. Yeah, so all the RAM tests uh, are okay and the SID chip is working, but that we already knew. So I put back uh, the original CIA chips and they work just the same as these, so no issues with that. Uh, the reason I swapped them was because I thought they were bad, but in fact it was just a misaligned contact. Okay, it's a bit annoying to have a partly uh, <laughs> working keyboard, so now I'm gonna replace the keyboard membrane on this keyboard, see if it works any better then. The locks for the keyboard, uh, this should be pushed in and then they grip on the side of the machine and uh, keeps the keyboard in place. However, both of those are broken off as you can see. So I'm gonna see if I can find 3D model and print new ones. So I found this uh, keyboard uh, case clip repair kit. It uh, has several other parts that I don't think I need. It's uh, this one I need, so yeah. 
That's great. Also, I found the side panels that are uh, in fact missing on the machine and uh, the side panel is uh, too long for me to print on my printer. It doesn't fit, so I actually just split it in two and uh, yeah, that should then fit. Uh, just has screws in uh, one of the ends, so um, yeah, we'll see if this can work. If not, I'm gonna just glue them together. And also this uh, machine misses the uh, side plastic caps that goes onto the handle, like this. So I'm gonna print uh, those as well. Alright, so that's gonna take uh, almost five hours. <laughs> Back to the keyboard. It's a keyboard that doesn't have any screws, so I just need to release some clips. You can see there are some uh, square holes there. Just gonna push in and up like that. Yeah, no broken clips. And now I'm gonna take out the keyboard. It has some screws. It's a bit dirty. I think I'm gonna take off all the keycaps as well uh, just to clean them up. Yeah, and there's a connector, it's uh, screwed to the case. Now this plastic uh, goes into the sink and it gets a little bit of a shower and cleaning. All right, so to be able to get the membrane off, we need to remove uh, the keys themselves. Uh, some of them already came off uh, with the keycap and uh, they are just clipped in these holes. So just uh, need to push them um, out from the back. Kind of time consuming. <laughs> you need to be aware that there's a little spring in the middle. It uh, sits in there but it can easily drop out so yeah you can risk uh, losing uh, the springs if you're not careful. The keyboard doesn't look bad or damaged uh, however we don't know what's under here. There's one bracket there that needs to be removed as well. And this screw. So now this should be loose. It's kind of glued in, so I'm not really sure if this can be taken off in a non-destructive uh, way, but uh, try to be careful so that I can keep it as a, a spare perhaps. <laughs> Satisfying peel. So it was over here on this side that the keys didn't work. Well, I can't see anything wrong there. So now I'm just gonna clean all the metal pads with some uh, IPA. It's a little bit dusty, I can tell. In fact, uh, it was a little bit uh, dirty. You can see the pad turned a little bit uh, <laughs> black. I checked around a little bit for continuity with uh, all the pads and uh, yeah, the contact and it all seems good. And here's the new membrane. The new membrane I got from Sell My Retro in the UK and it cost 20 UK pounds plus 580 in shipping. It has a plastic layer on top. I guess you're supposed to remove that because 
the original did not have that so now it's just a matter of placing this uh, accurately I use these holes below here to yeah get it right there's no glue under this one so I guess it's kind of important to get this contact uh, correctly placed on top here however I can't really see it because of this um, pad on top I place the old membrane on top and uh, it doesn't seem to be particularly accurate the new one I mean on this side uh, the holes align now perfectly but on this side they're off by at least one millimeter <laughs> so I guess we just have to um, try so now it should be held firmly in place hopefully except I realized the screws should be screwed in from the back side not uh, the front <laughs> All right, I think that was it. And now I'm just going to place back all the keys and yeah, I'm just going to test it a little bit before I assemble the whole keyboard in case it uh, is not properly installed. Okay, so what do we got? Yes, and the shift works, which it didn't before. Nice. That was it. There's one uh, key that's different than the others and that's the return key. It has this metal support and also the, the space bar has a metal support but it's uh, still the same key underneath. So now I'm just going to clean up the keys in some soapy water and then this keyboard will be ready. Before I continue, I just want to clean off this glass and it has these metal clips. I already took one off. You just pop them off and then you can uh, take off the glass. I think we only need to take the one there on the right off. Yes, and now I can clean the inside and the glass itself. As you can see, it's quite uh, dirty. I clean the glass and uh, yeah, it seems like uh, the visible part of the glass uh, or at least uh, the edges are um, a little bit different color. I'm not sure if that's intentional or if it's by age, but uh, yeah, doesn't matter. I put everything back together and I also inspected the, the floppy drive card but I couldn't see anything wrong so I'm actually laying that uh, floppy drive issue to the side I mean uh, that uh, probably needs its own video for a repair so maybe I'll come back to that later or maybe this will be fixed by Kjell Ove the owner Anyway, now I'm going to assemble the rest and start with the keyboard. So let's take a look at the, the parts that I printed. The parts came out really nice and uh, yeah, but I forgot I need two of those. I only printed one. Yeah, just needs a little bit of uh, cleaning up after the print. These covers looks great. And then we have these keyboard locks. They have a little support material that needs to be removed. And I printed them in red on purpose because I think that will look cool. <laughs> Besides, I have a lot of red left and uh, not that much black. <laughs> Just gonna remove uh, the old broken off uh, keyboard clips. I think this is a problem on a lot of uh, SX64s. Uh, these have broken off. <laughs> There's a spring, that one we need. Yeah, seems to fit very well. However, does it clamp really good onto the machine? That remains to be seen.
well yeah a little cool i don't know it's not original maybe it looks a little bit weird maybe i should have uh, printed these parts as well in red then <laughs> Right, just need the keycaps, but they are still drying after uh, cleaning, so I'm just gonna wait a little bit more. I noticed after assembling and uh, placing the floppy drive back, it uh, vibrates a little bit in the case, so it makes a little bit of noise. And I found these two plastic uh, washers uh, under the machine, I didn't notice. So perhaps they need to be there to make it more silent. Anyway, I'm not gonna <laughs> pull this whole machine apart again just to fit these. So I'm sure this floppy drive will come out sometime later and then I just keep them for then. All right, I think I'm done. I have uh, assembled the machine. It was missing some of the side screws and the screws for the back. I found some of them, but uh, I didn't have enough, uh, but it keeps uh, the machine at least together. So let's see about these uh, side panels. Let's see if I can slide it where it wanna go. Yeah, that looks all right. I mean, it's not perfect here where, where the join is, but uh, yeah. I mean, I should have cut it in the middle there, not in the middle of uh, the protruding part because the printer couldn't really handle that. But uh, yeah, that's all right, I think. And these just fit it perfectly. I used some double-sided tape. The machine is finished. I have uh, printed uh, the other two uh, side panels and uh, yeah, let's check if it actually, if the keyboard uh, <laughs> fits onto this. Yes, that fits perfectly. <laughs> nice. All right, that was it for this video. Obviously there's more to be done with the, this machine to get it uh, up and running completely. However, I think I went through most now and the uh, machine seems to work uh, very nice, except for the floppy disk drive. So I actually think I'm gonna hand this over to the owner now, Kjell Ove, and maybe he can do the rest on his channel in a future video. We'll see about that. So thanks a lot for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something and see you next time. And special thanks to my Patreon. See you, bye bye.